Greetings, Dosts, and welcome to another video. So, uh, by the time of this recording, uh, the uh, Forbidden TCG uh, Limited list is still under the April 15th one, and not the one slated for late August. Uh, I figured I'd do this video. Uh, this is pretty much showing you the my finalized list before the next uh Forbidden Unlimited list. Uh, I already uh, made a last deck report video, so this is not going to be a deck report uh, of sorts. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect uh, how I've been doing throughout this WCQ season, or throughout this season entirely, like this current list, and just some things that I've learned about and why did I end up piloting the decks that I piloted uh, throughout this season. Uh, but yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, let's begin. So this is going to be um, pretty much my last deck profile. This is the last deck that I've built in this current format. And I feel like this list was pretty much perfect for me. I don't think I would have done any other changes. Obviously, with the next Forbidden Limited list, uh, things will change, especially if I s s decide to stick around with playing this deck. But the list goes as follows. Um, three Elder, three Lara. So these are the, your best extenders. Hawk and Pengu, these are your best starters. Your five other names, which are engine requirements. So, 17 ritual beasts in total. The three nemesis. The three shifter. That puts us at 23 uh, total monsters. Uh, consistency. So, three inheritance. 3 Teleport, we're still not, not on Prosperity. Um, board Breakers, so 3 Book, 3 Talents. And I guess I should add the Imperms. And then the last two cards are Ambush and Steeds. So that is a 40 main deck total. We're going with the extra to Kimon Falcos, IP, SP, Rabbit. Uh, the statue is no longer in the main deck, you'll probably already noticed. Uh, Radiari, Appaloosa, Double Hawk, Double Nat Drago, Ulti Apelio, Guy Apelio, Colossus, and Banshee. Parolia, Ash, Droll, 3, Ogre, 2 Storms, Duster, 3 Evenly Mashed, and the, sta and the Statue. Um, in my last list, I was playing the Statue in the main deck. Uh, after I did that profile, I kept breaking with this card. I bricked with this card a fair number of times. Uh, in game ones, and I figured uh, I might as well just move it to the side deck. Uh, if I know I'm going first against certain matchups, like for example, you Bell and Tempai Dragons, then the Rabbit engine just works really well against those decks. And now you fit it in. Another problem with Statue is that it does conflict with Dimension Shifter, and you're probably thinking, well, if you resolve Dimension Shifter, it doesn't matter what brick hands you have. Uh, you're pretty much buying a turn and to some extent that is correct but you don't want like unneeded cards in your game one um, even if you're already in a victorious position like Ritual Beast is not the most consistent deck of, uh, of the format and that deck uh, like really gets hurt by not seeing like enough of their names so 
just moving it to the side that I felt was just the correct choice and it worked out so how have I been doing this season with this deck um, I've won three locals I've won a win a mat event and that was a really good mat I, I already have it sold so sadly I cannot show it to you um, there was a regional uh, two weeks ago um, or a week and a half ago but I did not I was not able to make it to that regional but this probably would have been my deck of choice for that event and overall it has been more positive than negative to this day my I've only had one loss against snake eyes me playing this deck and it was due to dimensional barrier being flipped on game three uh, which means they resolved the Beatrice uh, combo with uh, Angel of Blue Tears. And it wasn't really the Dimensional Barrier that made it so I couldn't play the game. It was more the fact that they had like three to four interruptions. And my hand was four Ritual Beast names. Uh, if I would have opened any amount of non-engine, like for example any of my post side cards, or like the Talents or the Book of Eclipse, it probably would have been a bit different game. I probably would have pushed through the board. I got the Mission Barrier three times. That was the only loss. The on the other two games I've won because I had access to the Nemesis package. And I managed to equalize the game. Like just softening their board and then locking them out with uh, whatever monsters I added with the Nemesis uh, flag. So... Uh, as you guys already know, another deck I've been playing this uh, season was the Bestial Centurion deck. Uh, I really was a fan of that deck. I really wanted to keep playing it. But I felt for this particular format, at least post Infinite Forbidden, Ritual Beast was just a way better choice. Like, uh, the surprise factor took a lot of people by surprise. The fact that this deck can play Dimension Shifter just gives you a very strong edge. Um... The Nemesis Monsters is also really, really strong. Like, in a format like this one, it's not favorable for me to play Centurion because the Tempai matchup is not super favorable. Uh, the Yubel and Snake Eye decks are, have a way higher ceiling. And I didn't want to just play Hand Traps and call it a day. I wanted to just play a deck that it had insane combo potential or just an insane potential altogether equal to those decks while not relying on that many cards there are people that just play this deck with uh, hand traps and they just play it as like a combo deck with more lines that people just don't expect but i don't like doing that um the only hand trapped i played was this and shifter the number one reason was because of uh, the popularity behind Crossout. And I did get Crossout for this twice throughout the entire format, which is fair. Uh, but the other reason for playing Imperm specifically is because you don't lose to Triple Tactic Talents. If you noticed my entire main deck, I don't have any cards that makes it so I just become victim of Talents, in at least in game one. Post game 2 and 3, then I, I do play the other hand traps just as necessary evils for certain matchups. But at least for game 1, I really, really respected this card. I'd rather lose to getting hand trapped than lose to this. I'd rather lose to my opponent making an end board that I couldn't break than losing because my opponent saw my hand and they just turned an unplayable hand into a more unplayable hand. Or just lit made it so I was just less consistent with my plays. I did shifter in the main phase against a fair a few matchups, like for example against uh, against Voiceless Voice uh, and like against Chimera and against like a few other combo decks that just use uh, materials for their monsters. I activate this to catch them off guard and makes them w waste their resources and on those instances i don't care about talents because if they choose to talents to look at your hand they're only doing it to make sure that you don't get to play the next turn and they pray they can play the turn afterwards um 
while when you shifted them in a very awkward spot where they end up losing like two to three cards because of it, uh, they are forced into a position where either A, they have to challenge to draw two in order to recoup whatever they lost in card advantage, or at, or another instance, uh, they can look at your hand, but if your hand is strong enough to play the next turn, despite them looking at it, then they, it really doesn't matter because they already got punished by Shifter. Uh, I'm playing this, the fact that I'm playing the three Nemesis again, uh, I wanted the versatility of being able to Protoss whenever I go second, but at the same time, if I knew certain matchups or I was unknown against certain matchups, I wanted to do Colossus first. There are lines involving the Venture Shifter where you can go for Colossus and recycle your flag to make sure flag can be activated the next turn to search for Protoss. Um, those are lines that do exist. Usually whenever I shifter, I just try to go on, on a minimalistic board uh, because one, I don't want to waste too many resources, I don't want to get punished by too many hand traps, and B, my opponent is under shifter. So if my opponent is under shifter and this got resolved and their deck is naturally weak to shifter, they're not going to play the next turn anyway. Which means if you give yourself enough follow up or enough like cards to just play for the third turn, uh, instead of just trying to lock them out with another card, then you're already secure for like uh, the grind game. And Ritual Beast is a deck known for their grind game. If you if you enter the grind game with this deck and they are playing on minimalistic resources or in a simplified game state, you're not going to lose the game. Like, the, you have just way too many resources to your favor. Uh, this card being recurrable every single time is just very strong. Uh, Noku Drago being able to just, like, be a zero card starter by itself on turn three onwards is also really, really strong. So, that's pretty much it, like, when it comes to, like, the Snake Eye matchup, at least. Or at least again, at least using the the there's certain packages in my deck. Uh, the Ubel matchup by far was the most powerful matchup I've been facing. Is the matchup that I've been struggling against the most. Um, and you would think that that the place Protoss should not be like losing to Ubel that much. Well, uh, the issue is whenever you go second against Ubel, their their end board is stronger than the Snake Eyes end board. So. If you did not shift to them, or you don't open like strong, strong board breaking cards like, like these, for example, then like you're going to struggle a lot. Like their 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 board is going to be very hard to break. I did break a Ubel board with just my engine. However, it, uh, back then I was not playing Protoss in the main deck, and I got punished by that because I couldn't punish them for the next turn, and they just recouped half of their card advantage, and they punished me that way. So that's the hardest matchup by uh, by far. Uh, I faced a total of I think eleven Tempai Dragons, eleven or thirteen. I know it was around that number. Uh, I've only lost to Tempai Dragons once during the entire time I've been playing this deck. So. Uh, this goes to show you that the Tempai matchup is not really that hard, especially if you Protoss lock them or Colossus. Like, if any of these cards uh, hit the board and they don't have the answers to them, like, you pretty much just win the match. Um, and I think next format, Tempais are still going to be very powerful. I don't think Konami is going to, like, murder that deck just yet. Uh, we could be wrong. So that's another consensus uh, to like what I'm doing with this deck. Uh, will I play other decks after the Forbidden Limited list? Uh, it really depends on the volume of the ban list. If the ban list really does a number of things to check what is currently happening in the format, absolutely. I do have a lot of decks I want to play it in. Um, Baylands, Centurion, Punk. Uh, Visas Variants, uh, Chimera, uh, 
even the more roguish decks like uh, Goblin Bikers, Destina, and Virtual World. I, w I would play any of those decks if I if the format is adjusted in order for those decks to be like actual viable contenders. I would actually go for those decks. Uh, but as long as we're in a format like this one, um, I think Ritual Beast is just my way to go. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully the ban list comes soon. Uh, I think it's a little bit overdue at this point. I think we're at a point where Konami should have released it by now. But who am I to make those decisions? Uh, I am only here to like make the best of them, uh, make the best out of them, I would rather say. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is going to be my last profile of the current uh, April TCG list. Um, until the next one, keep practicing and keep doing.